And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. That's what I like to preach for a moment. Nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise <laughs> I like that. And give him as many as he needeth. <laughs> Woo. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, that's in the continued intense sense in the Greek. Keeps on asking. Amen. Every one of you that keeps on asking, receiveth. And he that seeketh, keeps on seeking, findeth. And him that knocketh, keeps on knocking. Amen. Whew. It shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? That's the third time he uses the word bread in this chapter that I've read to you just this few verses. Amen. Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Let's say that together. How much more? Say it big and loud. How much more? <laughs> you like the sound of that? I do. Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? <laughs> raise your hand and raise Him for the problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah,
the promise. Claim the promise. Hallelujah. And I have nothing to set before him. Amen. One reason we don't receive more from God is we're too hard to please. Amen. How many of you would consider bread much of a midnight snack? Huh? Bread is still one of the staples of creation. Still one of the main uh, foods of the world. Amen. In the east, those loaves are as hard as a rock. I mean, they can haul them in any kind of cart or wheelbar. It don't change them one bit. They fall out on the street. Amen. Just brush it off, throw it back on the cart. Amen. It don't change it one bit. They'll stand the test. Amen. Oh, not very many of us, not very many of our children would like it if we went home to nothing but bread. Because we're spoiled to death and too hard to please. Amen. But bread's good. Amen. He didn't ask uh, for much more either. He said, uh, amen. Uh, a friend of mine is coming. I have nothing to set before him. Amen. And uh, from within, the answer said, trouble me not. Door now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise to give thee. I say in you, though he will not rise to give him. Because he is his friend. Yet... Because of his importunity, he'll rise and give him as many as he needeth. Praise God. Three loaves is all he has. Three loaves of bread for a midnight snack to a hungry, wayfaring stranger. Amen. But boy, bread by itself is even good if you're hungry enough. I told it on Charles Barnett, but he said it wasn't him. I pictured in my mind somehow or other it was Charles Barnett that they smelled one of those bakeries with that bread like you can smell down at London, Kentucky as you drive down I-75, the wind just right. And they smelled that bread in that bakery. And one of them decided, Carlo the Preacher's, that they'd go knock on the door and see if they could get some of it. And so one of them knocked on the side door. If it wasn't Charles, and he said it wasn't him, I don't know who it was. Amen. But some preacher, friend of mine, someday maybe I'll find out. Maybe if I send this tape far enough, they'll tell me who it was that knocked on the side door of that bakery somewhere. Amen. Seemed like it was down in Kentucky, but I'm not sure about that. Amen. Sometimes we get things pictured in our mind, and it's not like we pictured it. Amen. And we remember our own mental picture better than we do the reality. Amen. I told the story all over the country about Bill Tinsley going hunting with his daddy. Amen. And how that uh, he was carrying the sack that he was going to put the possums and coons in. And uh, uh, they, they walked under a hedge apple tree and the ground was covered with hedge apples. And he reached down, picked one up, and asked his dad about it. said, son, them no good. said, throw them down, can't eat them. He said, they're bound to be good for something. What are they? Hedge apples, he said. Well, their apples are good for something. And so he picked up a few and put them in his sack. And after a while, they went on another hedge apple tree, and he picked up some more hedge apples and put them in his sack. And pretty soon, he was just loaded down with hedge apples. 
And after a while, he began to throw them out one by one. He didn't even have room for the possum. He had his sack full of something that wasn't any good. I'm afraid some folks come to church like that. The reason God can't help them is because they already got their sack full of something ain't worth two cents no how. Amen. Oh, glory to God. I don't know where that came from. Amen. If it's not God, blame it on me. Amen. Uh, well, I, I told Brother Tinsley, I said, Bill, I've told all over the country about you going hunting with your dad and picking up him hedge apples and fill that sack for him hedge apples. He said, that wasn't me. I said, I said, it wasn't. Man, I've told all over the country about you. He said, I never went hunting with my dad in my life. <laughs> Made it even worse. I told all over the country. I got a mental picture in my head of the wrong fella. Amen. I told it was Bill Tinsley. But it was someone, Joanne, I think, from your end of Kentucky. Amen. And I don't know whether it was Brother Shelton or who it was. But anyway, amen. I know it was Bill that walked into church in Lola, Kentucky in the fellowship meeting one night. Amen. And, and uh, their daughter's real little and, and Greg was real little. Amen. And Bill had a, a, a bottle, baby bottle sticking out of each pocket carrying them two babies in the church that night at the fellowship meeting. And he got testified. I said, bless God. I said, sometimes I carry these bottles around so much I feel like a bootlegger. That was Bill that said that. Amen. Uh, but... He said it wasn't him went hunting with his dad and picked up them hedge apples and put them in the sack. Amen. Oh, my. We're so hard to please because we're not hungry. We're already filled up. We've heard everything, seen everything, and know everything. Amen. But in school, a bunch of hungry little kids, amen, read about the gingerbread man and how when they got him baked, he run away, and I could have eat three of them. Hey, man, I got so hungry reading about that gingerbread man in school. Hey, Amen. And then we read about that potato and uh, how they were going to bake that potato. And, oh, all our mouths was watered. A whole school full of hungry, poor little kids. Then they could just taste that hot potato that we was reading about in that school book. And then there was that time that we read about the family going on a picnic and they put their can of beans on the fire and it exploded and beans went all over everywhere. And how that the family picked up each and every bean and washed them off. And how that they told them they had to punch holes in the can next time to keep it from blowing up. The pressure inside is what caused it. But they saved the day. They washed every bean. And by the time they got done washing them beans, we could eat a barrel full. We was hungry for beans. You know, we're kind of hard to please. Amen. We want more than bread. We want more than hard, dry bread. We have so much in America that they are, there are guys that get day-old bread by the truckload and take it and feed it to their cows and hogs. We got so much milk and butter and dairy products that I've got a friend out in Joplin, Missouri, amen, that got that distressed milk out of the store, amen, and fattened a whole herd of hogs with it. Many, many, many times over. Not only did he fatten hogs, he stocked me up. Amen. When I came home, we had butter. We put butter in the deep freeze. Man, we had butter and milk and uh, uh, buttermilk and all kinds. Anything you could freeze, we had it. Amen. And he, he, he gave me several boxes full of that stuff. We have so much today that we're kind of hard to please. One reason we have a hard time getting much from God is because we're not hungry enough. 
We need somebody with the shine of God and the glow of God and the love of God. Amen. On their face to make us hunger and thirst after righteousness. Amen. Here the friend, the neighbor that he's knocking on the door is a type of God. Amen. And he, the man that has company and nothing to feed them and needs three loaves, is us in our need. Jesus is teaching us that we can knock at God's gate long enough, we'll get an answer. Jesus is telling us, amen, that preacher knocked on the side door of that bakery with that good smell coming out of it. And a man poked his head out the door. And he said, we smelt that bread cooking and we just wondered if we could buy some of it while it was still hot. And the man thought for a second, he said, wait just a minute. Amen. Pretty soon he came back to the same door. Amen. With bread aplenty that they have been smelling and cooking. Bread that was still hot. Ah, oh, boy. You know how it is when you have communion? They just give you enough to make you want more. They just give you enough of that unleavened bread to make you want a big slug of it. They just give you enough of that grape juice, that wine, to make you thirsty for grape juice. Well, I've been the preacher in many of those situations and I got to take the rest of the grape juice left over to the house. I got to take the rest of the communion bread to the house. In Barreville, Kentucky, after Sister Fern Kid had made that big old flat piece of unleavened bread and then broke it up and brought it to church. Amen. We passed it all out. That is all everybody could to furnish a, 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 piece, a piece of bread for everybody and had communion and I got the rest of it. I took it home and me and Kim and Jeff sat there around the table eating unleavened bread. We had got our appetite up. Amen. Jeff still talked to a little bit of a lisp. He said, boy, said, I'm sure glad they didn't throw this good stuff away. Amen. And we chowed down on unleavened bread. <laughs> Amen. And drank the rest of that grape juice. Amen. Are you getting hungry? Huh? Now, some of you was hungry before I started. Amen. Hey, he that hungereth and thirst after righteousness is the one that's going to be filled. You got to be hungry or nothing will satisfy you. You got to be hungry or you'll be critical. Amen. I give candy to the kids back there. There's just one problem there. They've had every kind of candy in the world. They've already developed their likes and dislikes. Amen. And some of them are like Andy's little girl, the one that's gone on. Amen. And Tina held her down uh, to get her some candy, and I handed her one. She said, I don't like that kind. So I gave her the whole bucket to pick out what she wanted. We've already developed our tastes. We've already developed our likes and dislikes. Ah, we've tasted of it. We know what we want. We know what we like. But we need to get real hungry. Amen. Brother Moore said he didn't like turnip greens. He fasted three days in revival, and a lady they stand with, preacher's wife they stand with, fixed some turnip greens. He smelled them and cooking. She said, Brother Moore, all jubilant about it, do you like turnip greens? He said, I love them. He smelled them cooking. Amen. Hey, Brother Waterman had fasted for, started a fast and, and big family, and, and his wife fried chicken, and he decided to break his fast. And uh, uh, he, he knew you had to break his fast 
gradual because you can have problems as you break fast too quick, especially if you fasted some weeks. And, and she brought that platter of chicken in. And he said, my first impression was just to stick my face down in it and eat it all. Hungry. Been fasting. You know, it's hard to please if you've been fasting. Praise God. Hey, amen. We need to be more thankful for what we've got. We need to be more thankful for how we've been blessed. We need to be more thankful to how our cup's already running over. We need to be more thankful, praise God. And some of us ought to be plumb embarrassed about asking God for anything else. We've already got too much. More than we'll thank Him for. Amen. We live in a generation that thinks that God owes them a living. Society owes them a living. The government owes them a living. Somebody owes them a living. Amen. And in this day and time, it's hard to get anybody to really work. Amen. Ooh, if it's a little too cold or it's a little too hot, they don't want to work. Or if the work is a little too hard, I've wide-eyed a many of them. Amen. Yeah, don't want to work. It takes some inspiration to work. It takes a dream to work. You got to dream about payday. You got to dream when I was on my knees in the rocks in the hills of Arkansas picking strawberries for seven cents a quart. Amen. I crawled on my knees till my knees got sore. I squatted down until my legs got sore. I sat down until I got sore. Amen. And then I got back on my knees again and got sore again. What kept me going? Amen. At the end of every day in the strawberry patch, they paid you. And I was daydreaming about big vanilla ice cream cones that I was going to buy when I got where I could get a big vanilla ice cream cone. In those days, they had those double cones, you know. Amen. And you get a double dip, one on each side, then another one on top of that. Amen. Oh, man. Uh, you got to have some sort of a dream, something that keeps you going, praise God. Uh, hey, you that are seeking the Holy Ghost that need the power of God, you need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You need to get in the book. Amen. Because this bread he's talking about translates in the 14th verse to the Holy Spirit, to them that ask him. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost comes however we need him. The Holy Ghost comes, whether it's healing, amen, he comes as healing. Whether it's a financial blessing, he comes as financial blessing. Whatever we need, strength, encouragement, a home, enough to make a car payment, amen, the Holy Ghost moves on the scene in just the way we need him to. Amen. If he then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that keep on asking him? Woo! Hallelujah. Keep on asking him. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, and God is a father... Will he give him a stone? Amen. If he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? I got lizards crawling around on my back porch in Arkansas. Because it was warm back there. It's on the south side. And my wife went outside and saw them lizards and wanted me to take care of them. I didn't bother them lizards. She said, I saw one that was a, that looked different than the rest of them. I said, was it kind of striped? Yeah. I said, that's a scorpion lizard. She said, are they poison? No. They're not poison. They're beneficial. But she didn't try to catch one. 
and fry it for breakfast the next morning. Amen. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, she wanted me to get rid of it. I didn't do anything. As a boy, I used to catch them, and you know, you grab them by the tail. I, one of the escape uh, uh, routes God gave the lizard was his tail to break off. You get it by the tail, his tail will break off, and it just keep going. You get another part of the tail, if you happen to be lucky enough, and it'll, it'll break off some more, and the lizard just keep going. He can grow another tail and does. <laughs> Amen. But uh, he don't want to take a chance on getting in your hands or in your grasp. Amen. And so the lizard keeps going. Got a bunch of them. They catch bugs. They, they eat a lot of mosquitoes and flies and stuff like that. And so that makes them beneficial. That makes them worth uh, their weight in... <laughs> copper or something or other praise God but you don't fry them for breakfast you wouldn't get much out of them if you did amen we're more merciful than that aren't we if our son asks us an egg will we give him a scorpion no if we've got an egg we'll give him an egg oh boy I remember when Bartis, my mom's one of her younger brothers, came home. He'd been out on the town somewhere. And he came home uh, with a hangover and hungry. And we was all hungry little kids. But Grandma went to work and fried Bartis two big old country eggs. And boy, they smelt so good cooking. They smelt so good. And we were so hungry. And all us little kids stood around and watched Bartus as he ate those eggs that Grandma had fried for him in high noon, if you will. He meant right up in the middle of the day. Oh, boy. I never got a bite of that egg, but in my estimation, them was probably the best eggs that ever was cooked. I could tell by looking that they was awful good. Amen. Hey, praise God. Some of us, we wouldn't like it if we just had an egg. We'd say, I don't like old eggs. We're hard to please. Amen. We've had everything. We've seen everything. Why, we've heard the best of songs. We've heard the best of preachers that ever wore shoe leather. We've read the best of books. Amen. What's it going to take to make us hungry? I tell you, bread will even taste good again, Dennis, if somebody will bake it fresh and present it hot. Hallelujah. Hey, praise God. John 3.16 will sound good again if Oakley will just build a fire under it. Praise God. And set it on fire for a while. Amen. Hey, they don't have much wood to cook the rice with in the Philippines. They, are, they grow a tree that grows limbs off that they can break off, cut off, and the tree will grow the limb back out. And you'll see a Filipino going down the street with an arm load of limb. And they break them up real small. And they cook the rice. But somebody in a little clay stove with a pot on one end with a little pile of sticks is going to have rice to eat in the Philippines. Amen. And they buy a lot of garlic by the roadside. If all you had was rice three times a day, you'd want a little garlic in it too to season it up. Amen. And so they eat a lot of garlic right along with the rice. You can tell it when they come to church. Amen. You can tell they eat them rotten fish that they bought in the market. You can smell it on their breath when they come to church. Amen. Hey, but you get hungry enough, them rotten dried fish will taste good. Amen. Oh, praise God. We need to ask God to forgive us 
of our picky uniness about the things of God. Forgive us, God. Amen. And help us to build a fire under this old-time gospel until it'll smell so good cooking. Then it'll taste so good when the preacher presents it behind the pulpit. We'll say, God, give me three loaves. I change my mind. I want some bread from heaven. I'll take the angel's food. We're just like Israel. The Bible said he fed them with angel's food. He wasn't too long to lay his head. Our soul loatheth this light bread. Amen. Oh, praise God. Warm it up real good one more time. Amen. Oh, dry popcorn without any salt might be kind of plain. Amen. But salt it good and melt a chunk of butter. Amen. Pour some butter over it while it's still hot. Amen. And then try it. It'll be better. Praise God, we need to flavor the glorious gospel of Christ with the fire of God and the salt that God provides. Amen. He need to get enough heat to melt the butter. Amen. To flavor the good things of God. Hallelujah. And make it attractive one more time. Amen. But the main thing is to be thankful for what you got. And keep on asking for what you need. Stand with me, Lord. Bless our remarks. Challenge our hearts to cry out to God. Claim the good promise of God. Amen. That we might eat the bread of heaven again. Angels' food and not grumble. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, wonderful Lord. Glory to God as they sing. We invite you around an altar of prayer in your quest for more of God. Keep on asking. In your hunger for the great things of heaven, keep on asking until the curtain folds back. Heaven opens up and you get a smell or you get a peek or you get a taste of that which comes from heaven. Until you can't stand it. Till you get the full oath. Until you get the full blessing. Praise God. Come on. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul.